Okay, so today's unit, we are starting mechanical systems, and our first topic is called levers and inclined planes. Um, so today we'll talk about levers, and we'll also talk about um, work and using the work formula. So a lever, this is a simple machine that changes the amount of force you must exert in order to move an object. <laughs> okay, so it consists of a bar. So there's the bar. And it's free to rotate around a fixed point. And that point here is called the fulcrum. Okay, so the fulcrum, it supports the lever. So here we can see on the left-hand side, that's the effort. And on the right side here, we see the load that needs to be lifted. Um, so here in this diagram, we can see different parts of, of a lever. So again, it consists of a bar that rotates around a fixed point. That's the fulcrum. So let's talk about the effort force here. It's shown here by the green arrow. That's the force exerted on a lever to make it move. Okay, it describes the force that's supplied to any machine in order to produce an action. The load is on the left-hand side. Um, this is the mass of an object that's moved or lifted by a machine and the resistance to movement that a machine has to overcome. So that's the load. The effort arm is shown here. And this is the distance between the fulcrum and the effort force. The load arm is shown here. That's the distance between the fulcrum and the load. So there's three classes of levers that we're going to talk about. Um, the class of a lever, it depends on the positioning of the effort force, the load, and where the fulcrum is. So class one is shown here. Um, you have the fulcrum in between the effort and the load. An example of this is scissors. Class two, we see um, the fulcrum on one end. Um, this type of lever, it always exerts a greater force on the load than the effort force you exert on the lever. And you can see the load is between the effort and the fulcrum. Okay, an example of this is a wheelbarrow. A class three lever, the effort is exerted between the fulcrum and the load. There's where the effort is. And on these type of levers, you have to exert a greater force on the lever than the lever exerts on the load. So for example, you're trying to move the load very quickly. An example of this would be like a hockey stick. All right, so just showing again the different um, classes of levers, so class one, an example of scissors, class two, an example is a wheelbarrow, and then the hockey stick is an example of a class three lever. Uh, bones and muscles, these are built in levers. So our bones act as levers and the joints act as the fulcrum, so in fingers or toes and arm. Um, tendons attach our muscles to our bones. So when a muscle contracts, the tendon exerts a force on the bone. Um, the load can be the body or something that's being lifted or pulled. All right, so uh, this first diagram here showing um, the skull and neck area, that's showing a class one. Here, we're looking at a type of a class two lever and then C, um, like lifting weights, that would be an example of a class three lever. Um, just some applications of levers. This is in space, so the Canada arm. It's a, it's an arm. Uh, it's made up of gears and levers. It's used in outer space at the um, International Space Station. Um, here is the space station mobile servicing system. Um, it's equipped with um, two-armed robot and it does um, repair jobs in space at the International Space Station. Okay, I'm going to pause here. Okay, so next we are going to talk about work. So work was mentioned in that first video we watched. Um, so when you exert a force on an object and move that object some distance in the same direction of the force, then work is done on the object. And the formula for work is work equals force times distance. 
Okay, so we can show that like this. Work is equal to force times distance. Now, um, work is measured in units called joules. So work is in joules. Force is measured in newtons, so capital N. And then distance is measured in meters. Okay, so newton meters um, is equal to um, uh, one joule. So let's take a look at this example. So let's say you exert a force of 2.0 newtons. So that's your force. On a lever and moved at a distance of 0 0.6 meters. So your distance is 0 0.6 meters. And then we have to calculate work. Work is what we are trying to find. All right, so our formula is work equals force times distance. It's shown here. I'm just going to show it again. So force times distance, you're just going to multiply the 2.0 times the 0 0.6. Okay, 2.0 newtons, 0 0.6 meters. And we multiply that together, and we have 1.2 joules as our answer. Okay, so make sure you know your uh, units um, for each part of um, the formula there. All right, so 1.2 joules of work was done on the lever. All right, this example, you carry your backpack full of books down the hall at school. The backpack weighs 40 newtons, and you walk down the hall a distance of 16 meters. How much work did you do? How much work did you do on the backpack? The question, the question is asking about how much work was done on the backpack. So... There is no work in this instance, okay, because the exerted force is upward on the backpack, but you're not moving upwards. You're moving in a horizontal direction, all right? So the force is upward, and you're moving um, in a forward direction. That is why um, there's no work done, all right, for a question like that. Okay, so I'm just going to pause here. Okay, so just to go back to the formula, work is equal to force times distance. Therefore, if we rearrange the formula, distance is equal to work divided by force. And if we were looking for force, force is equal to work divided by distance. Okay, so those are um, the three formulas um, related to work. All right, so next we are looking at inclined planes. So an inclined plane, this is a ramp or a slope. It reduces the force you need to exert to lift something up. So for example, if you're lifting a box straight up, that would be much more difficult than using a ramp um, to kind of push it up. All right, so in this example, um, Olivia has to get a box into the back of the truck, is lifting the box straight up and carrying it to the back of the truck the best option. So no, she used an inclined plane um, to help her load the box into the truck. So that inclined plane, it decreases the effort force that she needs by increasing the distance. Okay, so distance gets increased, effort gets decreased. Okay. Um, that's inclined plane. So next we're going to talk about work input and work output. So when we talk about input work, this is the work that you do on a machine. And then the output work, this is the work that the machine does on the load. Keep in mind that a machine, it'll never do more work on the load than you do on the machine. Okay, so when we're doing our calculations, um, keep, that in keep that in mind. So machines, they make work easier. They're either going to change the size or the direction of the force exerted on the machine. So we're going to do some calculations with mechanical advantage. Mechanical advantage is the comparison of the force produced by a machine to the force applied to the machine. So it's the comparison of the size of the load to the size of the effort force. Um, the smaller the effort force compared to the load, the greater the mechanical advantage. So this is the formula um, for calculating mechanical advantage. It's the load force shown as 
f with the subscript of, of l, and it's divided by the f, of course. Um, f would be subscript of e. So let's take a look at this example. A truck gets stuck in the mud. A tree branch is used as a lever to lift the truck out of the mud. Okay, so shown here. So if you apply an effort force, effort force of 500 newtons, so the effort force is 500 newtons, to the branch, and the back of the truck weighs 2,500 newtons, what is the mechanical advantage of the branch lever? So here's our formula. Um, load force divided by the effort force. So therefore, 2,500 newtons divided by 500 newtons. All right, our, our units just get like canceled and we're just left with the number, just the number five. So 2,500 divided by 500 gives us an answer of five. This is a mechanical advantage that is greater than one. So that means that this branch lever, it exerted a force five times greater than the force the person exerted on it. So that means the branch lever, it made the job of lifting the truck five times easier. So when you have a mechanical advantage greater than one, that means um, the user is able to move a large load with a smaller effort force. All right, and keep in mind there's no units to express mechanical advantage because it is a ratio that we're looking at. All right, so that's an example where the mechanical advantage is greater than one. Um, next example, let's say you're riding your bicycle, you're exerting a force of 736 newtons downwards as you push on the pedal. The resulting load force that causes the bicycle to move forward is 81 newtons. What is the mechanical advantage? All right, so the load force is 81 newtons. The effort force that you're putting in is 736 newtons. So again, you're going to divide load force divided by effort force. The units cancel out. We end up with a number of 0 0.11. All right, so here the mechanical advantage is less than 1. So what's the advantage here? Because um, our mechanical advantage is less than 1. The advantage here is that the tires are spinning or turning faster than the pedals on the bike. So therefore the bike is moving faster than your pedaling speed. So therefore you're gaining a speed advantage. All right, so sometimes the mechanical advantage of a machine is less than one. Um, a person has to put in more force than the machine can move. An example would be a class three lever. Um, a person exerts more force on a class three lever than the, than the lever can move. An example of that was like the hockey stick. Um, so the advantage of a class 3 lever is that the force will move the load a greater distance and at a faster speed. So similar to here um, when we were riding the bike. So that's the advantage there. Um, next, um, a flagpole. So the effort needed to raise a flag up a flagpole is 120 newtons. The load force, which is the flag, plus the rope is also 120 newtons. So what would the mechanical advantage be? So load force divided by effort force, um, 120 divided by 120, we're just left with one. So this is just a mechanical advantage that's equal to one. So some machines, they don't actually have any effect on the effort force that you exert. They're just changing the direction of the effort force, right? So here to raise the flagpole, um, you're just changing the direction of the effort force. So therefore, the effort force and the load, they're equal, so the mechanical advantage is equal to one. Um, another way to calculate mechanical advantage, like this is for a lever, um, if the effort arm of a lever is three meters and the load arm is 0 0.3 meters, you can calculate the mechanical advantage using this formula here. It's effort arm divided by the load arm. So 3 meters divided by 0 0.3 meters, it gives us a mechanical advantage of 10. All right, so that's, that's a mechanical advantage of greater than 1. Um, lastly, in this topic, we just look a little bit at machines made to measure. So ergonomics, this is the study or the science of designing machines to suit people. So like designing home or work environments that best suit the human body in its various dimensions. So for example, 
Carpal tunnel syndrome, it's a common workplace disorder. It causes numbness, pain in the thumb, um, pain in the th first three fingers, um, maybe up the forearm. And it's because of repetitive finger movements involved in looking at a computer keyboard or using a mouse. So the study of er ergonomics would design keyboards and design um, a mouse um, that would reduce things like carpal tunnel syndrome. Um, other examples, a space suit, a child's car seat, an assembly line in a factory, they've all been designed to ensure that they're easy, comfortable, and safe for people to use. All right, so that's ergonomics. All right, so we'll stop here.